All right. Well, um, happy uh, Monday to you all. And uh, it is uh, it's sixth week. And um, you guys have a midterm on Wednesday. And uh, and I and you guys are also doing your homework. So I hope that's all going well. Um, and um, and yeah, uh, I know some of you guys had questions about what exactly the um, like how many questions of this and that um, I'll have on the midterm. And the answer is I'm still just kind of tweaking it. Um, and again, it's a, it's a bit of a challenge to try to figure out uh, how long or how difficult exactly to make the exam. So um, so we'll, we'll do it and we'll see and, um, and we'll go from there. But um, as far as today um, or this week, um, today we will uh, take a look at floating point numbers. And we're actually going to spend uh, both today and Friday uh, on this topic of floating point numbers. And I know um, some of you have already seen uh, this topic before, uh, like if you took Math 151 or something like that, you know, this will be uh, a bit of a review for you. Um, but, um, but I think for, for many others, it's still kind of a, a new topic, newer topic. And so, um, uh, and, and it's an important topic, especially when dealing with the, uh, the computer to do uh, any kinds of calculations. Uh, it's, uh, it's an idea that we have to be familiar with. And, um, and so we're gonna uh, take a look at it today and we'll, um, uh, we'll, we'll wrap the uh, topic up on Friday, okay? So everything um, regarding the issues that we have with floating point numbers stems from the fact that we can only kind of represent approximations of a lot of our numbers, okay? And so, you know, somewhere in your, um, your schooling, you learned about real numbers. And basically real numbers can be thought of as um, all the points on the number line, okay? Going from negative infinity to positive infinity, this is your real number line. Uh, the integers are equally spaced, um, but we have infinitely many real numbers, okay? And we have, you know, and, and you pick any two locations on the real number line, any two distinct num locations, and you have infinitely many real numbers between those two numbers, right? So between zero and one, there's infinitely many values. And between zero and 100, there are exactly just as many infinitely many values between zero and 100, right? And then you have, um, and you have different kind of levels of infinity and stuff, but, um, but basically you have infinitely many uh, real numbers. And you, while you were learning about real numbers, you learned um, some properties of real numbers. So, you know, I was trying to remember when, when you guys learned this and the student said, yeah, it was around fifth grade, you learned PEMDAS and the orders of operations and things like that. Uh, and, you know, kind of going along with the orders of operations, you learned that, you know, some of your mathematical operations, such as addition and multiplication, um, have these properties where you can do a plus b um, plus c, and you'll get the exact same result as a plus b plus c, okay? Or if you do multiplication a times b times c will give you the exact same result as a times b times c, right? Or you have the distributive property a times b, a times b plus c is the same time as a times b plus a times c. And whether you do a plus b or b plus a or a times b or b times a, none of these things would affect the result that you have, okay? And so these were all kind of properties of real numbers. And I think uh, you kind of take a lot of these properties for granted. Um, but the thing is, is that when you're dealing with um, computer numbers, these, these things don't, don't quite work out, okay? Um, and another property of all the real numbers is that every number has a decimal representation, okay? Any number along the real number line can be re represented with a decimal with a decimal number, okay? Um, so you can represent uh, one half as 0 0.5. You can represent one third with 0 0.33333. The threes go on to infinity, but 0 0.33333 uh, is a decimal representation. You um, also have, um, like the number pi, right? So pi can be represented with decimals. It's just that those decimals go on to infinity, but 
but you can represent it um, with a decimal representation, right? And so you can think of, imagine any number along the number line and, and it's, uh, it will have a decimal representation. And we learned early on basically how kind of your, your places work when you're looking at a decimal number, okay? This is your ones place, and this is your tens place, and this is your hundreds place, 10 to the two, and this is your thousands place, 10 to the three, and so on and so forth. This is the tenths, which is 10 to the minus one. This is the hundredths, 10 to the minus two. And so this number, 5413.29, 5413, and 29 one hundredths is five times 10 to the three, plus four times 10 to the two, plus one times 10 to the one, plus three times 10 to the zero, plus two times 10 to the negative one, plus nine times 10 to the negative two. So this is, uh, we, we represent this value as kind of the combination of all of these different tens places. Okay. Um, basically any um, decimal number can also be represented using scientific notation, okay? And scientific notation basically yeah. is you've got some digits before the decimal point, and then a bunch of digits that come after the decimal point, and it's multiplied by some kind of exponent, okay? Um, and you know what, what we have normalized scientific notation says that you can only have one digit in front of the decimal point and that digit cannot be a zero. It has to be something between one and nine. All right, so you know we could represent this using scientific notation, but this if non-normalized would be something like this, okay? We can have uh, 541329, we can move the decimal Place to the right two places and we'll say times 10 to the negative two okay or you know kind of what we're probably accustomed to is we would represent 5413.29 as 5.41329 times 10 to the third right and because we moved the decimal point three places over to the left you know in order to kind of move it back to its original space we have to multiply it by 10 to the third okay and so that's scientific notation Scientific notation is really useful when we have to represent really big numbers, okay? So I think this is Avogadro's number, how many items in a mole, okay? And this is, uh, um, uh, this is another number, I forget, some constant, really small, okay? 10 to the negative 31. This is how we can represent, you know, really big or really small values. Uh, so we have to often, um, you know, we often want to represent real numbers um, using decimal representation. It's just a lot easier to kind of, when, when the numbers express as a decimal, a lot of times it's a lot easier to kind of deal with it. Uh, a lot of numbers have finite decimal representation, like one half can be represented with 0 0.5, but most, yeah. most real numbers, require an infinite number of decimals to represent them, right? Pretty much all irrational numbers, like the square root of two, pi, or e, are gonna have infinite decimal representations, right? You need an infinite number of digits. These, the, the numbers go off onto infinity. But even a lot of rational numbers, like one third, um, or you know, one seventh or one ninth, they're gonna have infinite decimal representations, right? Want to represent one third using decimals, it's going to be 0 0.33333, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, and those threes go on off to infinity, okay? And anytime you want to write a decimal representation of, yeah. of, of a number with infinite decimals, anytime you write it down, it's going to just be an approximation, right? If you try to write one third as a decimal number on a piece of paper, um, it's going to just be an approximation. I, I mean, there's some some ways to kind of indicate that it goes on forever. Like right? you can put a bar over it, and uh, and then that just means it goes on forever. But but generally, it just means. Um, but wherever you stop writing, that that's just an approximation. Okay. And when we use approximations, okay, when we rep store a number approximately in the computer, this actually breaks kind of. The, the properties of real numbers, right? These properties of real numbers that we've taken for granted won't work when we're using approximations. And that's, that's an important thing to, uh, to, to note, okay? 
So again, you know, when we use a computer, um, we can't use infinite precision. We, we don't have infinite space on our hard drive. You can buy a hard drive that's like 10 terabytes. You know, you can buy this really, really big hard drive that has lots of storage, but you cannot fit the entire number of pi, the decimal representation of pi on your hard drive because that requires an infinite amount of storage and, and 10 terabytes is big, but it's not infinite. Okay, and so, um, so you know, we basically represent all numbers with a fixed number of bits, and um, and that's going to be just a, a an approximation. Okay, and technically, um, computers use base ten <laughs> binary representation, um, um, base two. So we have ones and zeros inside the computer, but the same kinds of ideas of having. Um, finite representation uh, apply, okay? And so here's just a, a simple example of kind of the consequences of using an approximation. This, this is one that you might be familiar with. So here I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna show you a, a video of a calculator, okay? Now a calculator is able to represent numbers uh, in decimal, okay? Not, um, you know, it, I mean, technically there, there's binary bits happening underneath the, the screen as well, but but we can see just the consequence of having finite decimal representation. Okay, so I'm going to do the operation ten divided by three, then multiply that by three. Okay, so in um, in real numbers, ten divided by three times three should equal ten. Okay, but when we have um, finite values, ten divided by three is three point three 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 three. Okay, and then when I take this number, right, so we would all say, okay, that's a pretty good approximation of 10 divided by three. But if I take this and I multiply it by three, I don't get back 10, I get 9.99999, okay? And, and that's, that's basically this lecture in a nutshell, okay? Is that you have a number, it, and when you can only use a, a finite amount of digits to represent that number, things break, okay? So 10 divided by three times three is not 10, it's 9.9999, okay? Whereas if you change the order of operations and you do 10 times three divided by three, okay? So this one's silly, but if you do 10 times three, you get 30, you do 30 divided by three, you get back 10, okay? So that's no surprise. 10 times three is 30 divided by three is 10. The, the calculator has no, no issue with that, okay? But this breaks kind of this fundamental, um, fundamental property that we're, we're expecting of real numbers, okay? In real numbers, we expect this thing to equal this thing, but using computer numbers or approximate representations, these things don't equal each other, okay? These things don't equal each other. And so, um, um, so these these theoretical properties of real numbers don't uh, apply with approximate representations. And so, um, you know, just some other things. If you do the things with the square roots, okay. So if you do um, square root of two, you get this number. And if you take this number and multiply it by itself you don't get two back, you get something close to two, 1.999998, but that's not technically two, okay? So the square root of two squared gives you this, but if you do two squared, you'll get four, and you take the square root of four, and you'll, get, you'll get two, okay? Um, and similar things happen. Um, okay, so if I do um, A is, let me just delete everything out here. So if I have A is 0.1, okay? And B is 0 0.3 divided by three, okay? I can ask, is A equal to B? And the answer is false, okay? So again, A is 0.1, B looks like 0.1. And if I say A is A equal to B, it's false, right? Um, B is the result of 0 0.3 divided by three, okay? 
and clear that out. Uh, so that's false. Here's another example. If I say A is 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2, A is going to be 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2. Okay, so what's A? A is 0.3. All right, here I'm going to say B is 0 0.3. Okay, so B is 0.3. Is A equal to B? And the answer comes back false. All right, and and you can and you can you know you can even do like 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2. What is that? That's 0 0.3. 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 is 0 0.3. Is that equal to 0 0.3? And the answer is false. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I don't know if this is a surprise to you or if this seems strange to you, um, but this this is a consequence of using um, finite representation here. Okay. I think maybe maybe a sec. Okay. Right. Digits I should probably set to six, 16. Let me see. One, yeah. 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2. Is that equal? No. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's try another one. Here I'm going to do S is a sequence from 0 to 1 um, by 0 0.1. Okay. So S looks. Uh, you know what? Let me uh, set my digits options. Uh, maybe 16 is too many. Digits 15, 15 digits. Okay. All right, so there's S. Okay, so S is a sequence from 0 to 1 uh, by equals 0 0.1. Okay, so here's S. Right, and what's the uh, what's the fourth value in S? The fourth value in S is 0 0.3. Okay, is the fourth value in S equal to 0 0.3? And the answer is false. Okay, so that seems strange, right? But then I could say, well, what is the uh, the fifth value in S? Fifth value in S is that equal to 0 0.4? That's actually true. Okay, so, but this is strange, right? This looks like 0 0.3. This looks like 0 0.4. And the computer says, well, this is not equal to 0.3. And this 0.4, yeah, that's equal to 0.4. So what's going on? Okay, what's going on? So that comes back false. Uh, just another example, I can do 4 fifths times 3 times 5 fourths, right? So I'm going to say A is uh, 4 fifths times 3 times 5 fourths, okay? Uh, oops. What's A? A is 3. Is A equal to 3? That comes back false. All right. Here I'm going to try this. All right. And I'm going to do 4 fifths times 3 times 5 fourths. Okay. B looks like 3. I'm going to say B equal to 3. And that comes back true. Okay. So the computer says this is not equal to 3. But this is equal to three. Okay, so it's it's just strange, right? Those those things are not equal to each other. All right, and so we get a little bit of insight when we ask when we change the options. Options digits equals twenty. We can see zero point one. Okay, much in the same way that using the calculator, this old calculator. This calculator is not able to represent 10 divided by 3 exactly. All right. It can't represent the number one third exactly. It has to use an approximation of 0.33333. Okay. It turns out in binary, we are not able to represent the number 0.1 exactly. 0.1 in binary is 0.1000001. Okay. It's an approximation. This is an approximation. And 0 0.2 in binary is also an approximation, and you get this. 0 0.3 in binary is this, okay? And when you do 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2, you get this. When you do this number plus this number, in binary, you get this number. And this number is not the same as this number. And that's why when we ask, is 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2, is that equal to 0 0.3? It comes back false, right? It'd be kind of like if, if you were only allowed, say, um, 
five, five digits to represent a number, if, if I said represent two thirds using five decimal digits, you might choose to write 0.6667, okay? And if I say choose one third to rep, uh, write, use five decimal values to represent one third, you might pick this, okay? And then if you say, okay, well, what's two times one third? Two times one third would be two times 0 0.33333. And you get 0 0.66666, right? And this number is not exactly the same as this number. So it's kind of like, so if you you are limited to just finite decimal re representation, you probably run into a similar error. It's just that we're running into these kinds of errors with finite binary representation. Okay. So we're able to represent 0 0.5 exactly in binary. 0 0.6 we can't, 0 0.7 we can't, 0 0.8 we can't. So 0 0.75 we can represent. In binary. So anything that can be represented basically as powers of two can be represented exactly in binary, right? So like one eighth, 0 0.125 is represented exactly, okay? Three eighths, 0 0.375, that's fine, okay? But um, uh, and some of these things, yeah, 0 0.4, we, we're not going to, we're not able to represent them. Um, exactly. Okay. So, you know, here's just another example, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 minus 0 0.1, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2, 0 0.6 minus 0 0.3, and 0 0.7 minus 0 0.4 look like they should all be 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. But if you do it, if you do it in R, you get this, okay? And these are not exactly all 0.3. This one's 0 0.29999, this one's 0 0.300004, here's 0 0.29999, 0 0.2999, 0 and this is 0 0.29999, and it ends with a three. Okay, so we're getting some slightly different values. All right. Um, we had a question, you know, why, why, again, why aren't they all equal? And the, the answer is that we can only represent um, numbers approximately, okay, because we're using just a finite number of digits to represent these, these, these quantities. So in the same way that we cannot represent the number one third using in, in decimal notation, we cannot represent the quantity 0 0.1 or 0 0.3 in binary notation um, exactly, okay? And so when we, when we take that binary representation and turn it into a decimal representation, we get something that's a little bit off. Okay. And so, um, you know, is this, why is this number when I, when I created, when I said S is a sequence, when I say sequence zero to one by equals 0 0.1, why am I not getting 0.3? Why am I getting this, right? Point the not represent number for 0.3 is 0.2999. Why am I not getting that? And that's because I'm doing 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1. When you do the sequence by 0.1, you're basically telling it, to do 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1. And when you do that, you get 0 0.3004. And that's how the sequence function is getting this number. And this number 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 is not the same as 0.3, okay? Or, but if I did 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 here, I get 0 0.40002. And I think that's the same as 0.4. So um, zero, yeah. So here we get we end up getting the same, okay? So the fourth value in the sequence, we can ask, is that equal to 0 0.3? And the answer is false. So the fifth value in the sequence, is that equal to 0 0.4? That comes back true, okay? So the question is, uh, what steps will we have to take to make sure that A and B, like how can I make sure that I, you know, that I'm gonna get 0 0.3 and I'm gonna get 0 0.3? How can we make sure? And the answer is you can't, okay? Um, you can't make sure that you're gonna get that this 0.3 and if you calculate 0.3 another way, you're gonna get the same, right? Because all of these things look like 0.3, but they're not all 0.3, they're, you, get, you get different values, okay? So with digits equal to 20, you get a little bit of insight um, but uh, into what's happening, but you know, we're not always gonna know. And, and it's difficult to predict just knowing exactly like, uh, I don't think anybody can just look at this and say, oh yeah, this one's gonna end up like this. 
whereas this one's going to end up like this. Okay, um, it's not it's not something uh, that we can easily look at this and say, oh yeah, this is going to end up with this representation, and this one's going to end up with this representation. It, it, it's not something that you can just look at and identify, right? Um, and and so you can specify, you can set digits equal to, um, I think the maximum number of digits is something, I want to say like 17 or 18 or something like that. You can set it equal to 20 and basically it's going to print out uh, everything that it, it's able to, to print out. Okay. So um, it's not something necessarily that we can just kind of fix and solve. All right. This is just inherent to the fact that the computer has finite storage, represents numbers. Basically, it, there's infinitely many numbers to have on the number line, and we're not going to be able to represent them all. We have to kind of just pick the nearest finite value, finite approximation. And, uh, and so there's just going to be some consequences to that, and, and we just have to be aware of it. Okay, So you, there, are, there are things that you have to kind of watch out for, and you have to be aware of. Not something that we can just make sure that we always get what we want. Okay, and so um, so we'll. It, it's good to just talk about binary representation. Some, um, not all of you have seen binary numbers before, um, and so I'm going to just kind of give you a quick intro to it. And uh, with binary numbers, with with decimal numbers, we have the digits zero. We have ten digits zero through nine. Okay. With binary numbers, we only have two digits, zero and one. Okay, uh, and all numbers can be represented either with a zero or one, and that's how computers store information, uh, just as bits. Bits are on or off, and, uh, and we have zeros and ones. Okay, and uh, and this is how we represent binary numbers. Don't worry about this. Um, basically, uh, we just count this way. Okay, so zero um, is going to just be represented with a zero. So um, so I'll, I'll, we'll count. So this is zero, and then this is this first digit is going to be the one, okay? And then the this is going to be the two's place. This is the four's place. This is the eight's place, and this would be the sixteenth place. But but um, so all off is zero. The first one, the one's place on is a one. Um, the two's place on is a two. And the one is off, so that's two zero zero one zero. Is this is a two? Three would be a two plus one. This is a three. Okay, so this is three two plus one. Okay. Um, the next place, this is the fours place. So this this is an offensive sign, but um, it would be the the fours place is up. Okay. Five would be the fours place and the ones place. Okay. So this would be five. Count, counting in in uh, in binary. Okay, so this is five, uh, four and one. Six becomes is four and two. Four and two uh, makes six. And then seven is four and two and one. Okay, so uh, four, two, and one makes seven. Right. So so just counting uh, from zero to fifteen, we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14 and 15, okay? And then 16, 17, 18, 19, it's, it's a little bit hard. Uh, this is 20, 21, 22, wait, right? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, um, 24, right? 16 and eight, all right? And you can keep counting. You can count up to 31 on this hand. And then if you include both hands, you can count up to 10, 23 um, using binary. Uh, it's hard to do things other than count. It's hard to kind of add things together. But this is how we would count from uh, zero to fifteen using binary. Right? Is that okay? Counting counting with binary. So this is the eighth place. Nine is eight and one. Ten is eight and two. Eleven is eight, two and one. Twelve is eight and four. Thirteen is eight, four and one. And fourteen is eight, four and two. And fifteen is eight, four, two and one, uh, which make fifteen. Okay, and and it just keeps going, right? And so, so the number 11 would be represented with 1011. You have one in the eighth place, zero in the fours place, one in the twos place, and one in the ones place, right? 
And this is basically two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, and two to the three. So eight, zero, two, and one make 11. And so that's for kind of the, the, um, the whole numbers, okay? And you can represent fractional values as well, okay? And so um, anything that comes after, so over here is the decimal point, and this represents, this is the tenths place, and this is the hundredths place, and this is the thousandth place, okay? In binary, this is technically a binary point, the binary point, and here this would be the halves place, this would be the quarters, one fourths place, and this would be the eighths place, one eighths place. Okay, so representing one half would be zero point one. Representing one fourth, one quarter, would be zero halves and one fourth, so we have point zero one. And to represent one eighth, we have point zero zero one. And so this number here, three eighths, would be 0 0.011, 0 0.011 is 3 eighths, okay? Because I've got um, 1 eighth plus 1 fourth, 1 fourth and 1 eighth is 3 eighths, and I have 0 0.011. Is that okay? Representing um, binary numbers and uh, fractional values with binaries. So if I asked you, how would we represent uh, 3 fourths? 3 fourths in binary. What would you write? Three fourths would be 0 0.11, right? 0 0.11. One half and one fourth would be three fourths, 0 0.11. Okay, I realize I have to give you some um, quiz answers. So the first quiz answer is D, D as in dog. D as in dog is your first quiz answer. Let me, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll give you your second quiz answer as well. Second quiz answer is A, A as an apple, okay? First is D as in dog, second is A as an apple. Yeah. All right, so in, with decimal numbers, okay, most real numbers have an infinite binary representation. And, um, and so to represent point 0.1, the decimal number point 0.1, okay, in binary gets represented this way, 0 0.00.0001100110011, so on and so forth, okay? And you can put a bar over it to kind of indicate that this is a pattern that repeats off to infinity, but, um, but that's all we have, okay? Um, so, you know, we can't represent, have, have it go off to infinity in the computer. We have finite storage, and so, um, so point 0.1 is gonna be represented just with an approximation in the same way that we can only represent one third with an approximation, one tenth gets represented with an approximation in binary. All right. And so um, we're gonna take a look at this IEEE 754 standard, okay? The IEEE 754 standard is, um, is kind of a standard for how numbers are going to get uh, um, represented. And so, you know, it used to be that different companies, different chip companies would have different kinds of systems for representing um, numbers. But, uh, but you know, this, this specification came out. And so now pretty much all the, um, all the companies out there use this specification for how to handle floating point numbers. And it's implemented on the hardware at a hardware level in the computer chip itself. When it's talking, when it when it thinks about like numbers and calculations and stuff, it's handled at a at the hardware level. So whether you're using uh, you know R or Python or C it's all going to all of your floating point numbers are going to be handled by the um, the specification here. Okay, it was recently revised in two thousand eight. Um, but here in our class, we're going to look at the original 1985 specification, and that's still fully contained in the 2008 revision. Okay. Um, basically, we're going to represent all of our numbers, okay, using floating point representation, and that's going to be done via normalized binary scientific notation, okay? 
we've got a few bits. We have a sign bit to, um, so if you think about the parts of scientific notation, okay, there's a sign of positive or negative. And then you have kind of this fractional part, okay, one point something, something, something. Okay, that's gonna be, that's known as the significant or the mantissa. And it's gonna be multiplied by two to the something, okay? And that something here, this is the exponent, okay? And so these are gonna be the three pieces that we need to keep track of in our floating point representation, the sine, the mantissa, and the exponent, okay? Um, if you think about standard, standardized scientific notation, the digit in front of the decimal point, okay, cannot be a zero, right? Which means it has to be a digit one through nine. For binary, it's the same. The, the digit in front of the binary point can't be zero, but with binary, we only have two digits, zeros and ones. So if it's not a zero, the digit in front must be a one, okay? So we can always kind of assume that the digit in front of the point is always gonna be a one. Um, okay, um, the decimal number is, uh, so let's take a look at this number, uh, 6.375, um, okay, 6.375 uh, will get represented in binary uh, like this. Um, so the six is gonna become 110, okay? We have the fours place, the twos place and the ones place, okay? So we have a four and a two and no ones. So that's the six, okay? And 0.375, three eighths is gonna be 0 0.011, okay? We have no halves. We have one fourth or one quarter and one eighth, okay? So this is basically six and three eighths. The six is represented with a 110 and the 0.375 is represented with a 0.011. I hope that's okay. And so if we wanted to show this with normalized scientific binary notation, we would take this binary point and move it over two places to the left, okay? So 110.011 becomes 1.0, I'm sorry, 1.10011, okay? And because we moved it over two places, we need to multiply this by two to the two, right? And so if we do the calculations here, it, we are going to end up getting the exact same number, 6.375, and we just have a one. This is the ones place. We have a one in the halves place, so we have a 0.5, a zero in the quarter, zero in the eighths, okay, one in the sixteenth, and this is one in the thirty seconds, okay? So I have one plus 0.5 plus 0 0.0625 plus 0 0.03125, and that's going to give me 1.59375 times two squared, two to the two, which is four. And that's also going to result in 6.375. Okay, so we get the same number. You know, we multiply, we move the binary point over, and we get the same value. All right, so let's take a look at you know in our um, floating point specification, we're going to use double precision floating point. Okay, the 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 specification actually allows for different levels of floating point precision. You can have single precision, and you can also have long double. And they use a different number of bits. Single precision uses 32 bits, double uses 64, and long double uses 80 bits uh, for um, uh, 80 bits for storage. Okay. Now in R, you can only it, R only handles um, type double. Okay. So all of your numeric values other than integers are just type double. Okay. But if you are using a language like C or something, even uh, or Python, you can specify I want to type you know, I want a single precision uh, floating point number or something like that. You can specify those things, okay? Um, so, so integers are not, do not use floating point precision. So there's no, um, so the integer type, I think uses 32 bits to store um, uh, integer values or maybe not even 32 bits, uh, I forget. I forget how many bits integers use, okay? But, uh, but there's, it's not floating point, it's not precision, it's just it uses a fixed number of bits to store an integer value. Uh, I just don't remember off the top of my head. Okay, uh, when we do double precision floating point, those 64 bits are split up this way. One bit for the sine, 11 bits for the exponent, and 52 bits for the fraction or the mantissa, okay? And that's how we spend um, all 60, 
64 of our bits, okay? So one for the sign, 11 for the exponent. Um, so that's 12 plus 52 makes 64. And that's how we split up all 64 bits. And so um, the sign bit is, is simple. We have, uh, you know, zero for negatives and I mean, zero for positive numbers and one for negatives, okay? We have 11 bits for the exponent, okay? The 11 bits for the exponent means we can store a total of 2048 unique values, two to the 11. Um, each bit can represent two values, two raised to the 11 is 2048, okay? Uh, 2048, we want to be able to represent both positive and negative values using uh, our exponent, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're going to apply a bias, okay? Um, the, we're gonna have two reserved for special cases. All zeros is a special case and all ones will be a special case, okay? So if, if we reserve two for special cases, out of 2048, we have 2046 left and we want half of those to be negative and half of them to be positive. So what we're gonna do is we got, we can represent basically the numbers one through 2046, and we're gonna just shift those down. So that one is now gonna represent negative 1022, and the largest number 2046 will represent 1023. So this means we are applying a bias of 1023, okay? Applying the bias. And that number 1023 comes from basically two to the 10, two to the 10 is 1024, minus one gives me 1023. Okay. So we take one less the number of bit, bits, I have 11 bits, one less than that is 10, two to the 10 is 1024 minus one, 1023. And so for all double precision floating point, all of the exponent biases are 1023. Excuse me. Um, so, you know, whatever number we're gonna do, we're gonna kind of add this bias to it to get the um, binary representation. So, so basically, um, the decimal value zero in binary is going to be uh, this, all right, zero, 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 and that's a special case, all right? Um, if the exponent is negative 1022, okay, um, we're going to represent that in binary using all zeros and a one, okay? Um, the number two in binary is repre represents this. With the bias, this represents the exponent negative 1021, okay? And then the largest number we can represent is 2046, and that's in binary is this, and that's gonna correspond to the exponent of 1023. And, uh, and then the case where we have all ones, this is gonna have a special, special meaning here. Um, and so all ones is gonna be used to represent either infinity or not a number. And, uh, and, and we'll take a look at this uh, more on Friday. And then all zeros uh, in the exponent will represent subnormal or denormalized numbers. And again, we'll take a closer look at that on Friday. Okay, so to kind of get into this, let me um, take a look at uh, kind of a, a miniature version of the IEEE 754 specification. And in this case, we're gonna just use eight bits, eight bits to represent our numbers. And we'll use one bit for the sign, three bits for the exponent, and four bits for the mantissa. Okay. And so this is going to be just kind of like a miniature version of the IEEE 754 specification. Okay. The sign bit's easy zero if it's positive, one if it's negative. Okay. One side effect is that you're going to have two representations of zero, a positive zero and a negative zero, but not that big of a deal. Okay. The Exponents, okay, we've got three bits for the exponents, so we have a total of eight unique values, all right? We're gonna reserve all zeros for a special case and all ones for a special case, okay? So the values from uh, basically one through six are gonna be used to represent our exponents, okay? So the bias, the bias is gonna be three, okay? We want, we basically have six values that we can represent um, uniquely if we exclude the special cases and half of six is three and our bias is basically gonna be three here, okay? So um, so we're gonna just take uh, whatever number this is and subtract three. So zero, zero, one in decimal is one with the bias is gonna be negative two. One, one, zero 
and decimal is six, what the bias is going to be three. And so if you have, you know, some other number of bits, okay, uh, your bias is going to be two to the n minus one minus one. So in our case, we have three bits here. n is three bits in the exponent. Three minus one is two. Two to the two is four minus one. Um, or uh, our bias is three, okay? And again, all, all zeros and all ones will have special meanings here. And then the remaining four bits, okay, are used for the mantissa, all right? And in, we're gonna assume normalized binary scientific notation, which means the leading digit will always be a one, okay? Because in normalized scientific notation, the leading digit can't be a zero. And again, in binary, if it's not a zero, it has to be a one, okay? And so the four digits, uh, four digits, or sorry, four bits in the mantissa will um, will be placed after this um, the leading one. Okay, and that's that's how we're going to represent the values. Okay, so let's take a look. Right, so what if we have these eight bits? What number does do these eight bits represent? Okay, well zero is the sign, so we have a positive number. The exponent bits are one zero one, and the mantissa bits are zero one one one. Okay. So let's take a look at what the exponent bits are, okay? The exponent bits, one, zero, one, represent the de decimal number five. The bias is three, so the exponent value is two, okay? And if, if we flip back a couple tables, we can see one, zero, one is decimal five, and with the bias applied, represents an exponent of two, okay? So my exponent value is two. The mantissa bits, okay, so we have zero for the sign, one, zero, one for the exponent, and zero, one, one for the mantissa, okay? The mantissa bits are zero, one, 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 okay? We plug those in to get our number, okay? We're gonna plug the mantissa bits in here, and we get 1.0111. And this is gonna be multiplied by two to the exponent, which we figured out was two. So what is this? 1.0111 times 2 to the 2, right? So we have 1 plus 0 halves plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth, okay? 0 halves, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth. The 0, 1, 1, 1, okay? This is going to be multiplied by 2 squared or 4. So if I distribute this, this will become 4. This remains zero. One fourth times four is one. One eighth times four is one half. One sixteenth times four is one fourth. So I have four plus one plus one half plus one fourth. And I get 5.75. So this number represents 5.75 using this kind of mini float system. Okay. What does it mean to reserve for a special case? So the we're talking about you're talking about this the zero 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 and the one 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 the special cases there yeah so those we'll we'll talk about it on Friday but when all the exponents are zero they're going to be subnormal or denormalized numbers and when all the exponent bits are one it's going to represent either infinity or nan okay and and I'll again I'll talk about this more on Friday. So I hope this is okay. This is this represents the number uh, 5.75. Okay. All right. Let's see um, how can we represent 2.25 in binary with the mini float system. Okay. So 2.25 in powers of two is basically two plus uh, zero ones and plus zero halves plus one quarter. Okay, so the two is going to be represented with a one zero, and then the one fourth or the quarter, 0 0.25, is going to be represented with a zero one. Okay. Is that all right? So 2.25 in binary is going to be one zero point zero one. Okay, the two is a one zero, the one fourth is a zero one point zero one. Okay. So what we want to do is we're going to put this in normalized binary scientific. Okay, so I'm going to shift this number, this uh, binary point, one place over. So I have one point zero zero one. Okay, 
And now I'm going to have an exponent of 2 to the 1. Okay, because I moved this over one place, and my exponent is going to be uh, 2 to the 1 here. Okay, so this, this is going to become my mantissa. Okay, my mantissa is going to be 0, 0, 1. Okay, we add, tack on an extra 0 so that we have a total of 4 bits. We have a total of 4 bits for the mantissa. So we just start off with 0, 0, 1, and then we just tack on, you know, additional zeros to fill, fill up the rest of the mantissa. Okay, the exponent here, the exponent is 1. Okay. And so the and our bias is three, so we're going to represent one plus three or four in binary. Four in binary is one zero zero, and so that's going to be our exponent bits. Okay, so our sign is zero. There's, we have a positive number. We have a zero for the sign, one zero zero for the exponent, and then zero zero one zero for the mantissa. Okay, and again, if you kind of you can kind of write look, check out the exponent table to represent with the bias, okay, with one is going to be represented with a four and the binary bits is going to be one zero zero. Okay. So the exponent value we're representing is one. We have a bias of three, so we're going to have to represent the number four in binary, which is represented with one zero zero. One, two to the two, two to the one, two to the zero. One zero zero represents four. And this is our mantissa, zero zero one zero. Okay, we'll take a look at it uh, some more on uh, on Friday um, to kind of uh, see this. There's some interesting um, side effects of uh, more interesting side effects of using floating point numbers, and uh, and so we'll we'll see. Okay, um, last quiz answer for today is E E as an elephant E as an elephant or exponent is the uh, last quiz answer, and uh, and that's it. Um, good luck as you guys study. We'll see you guys on Wednesday uh, for the midterm exam, and then we'll keep talking about floating point stuff on Friday. All right. Have a good night, you guys.